Hello, welcome to NAS, and this is part 10. And in this video, we're going to be using GoLang to connect to our NAT server that is configured with a with Jetstream. And this is going to be a continuation essentially from our previous video in which we created a stream. And from the command line, we're subscribing to the stream as consumers. But now we're going to create our consumer in Go code. And then we'll see that a consumer is sort of a, a view into that stream. And so we can then connect to the consumer and you know retrieve messages as described by that view or that consumer. And so we talk about durable consumer, consumer that sticks around after the client disconnect, or ephemeral consumers. And those ephemeral consumers are the ones that they get this random name that we show from the command line, and soon the client disconnect, they go away. And every time a new client connects as ephemeral, they start retrieving the very first message that's in that stream, right? They have their own view. But with a durable consumer, um, the durable consumer remembers exactly where it left off and guess who is maintaining the consumer? Nats is. And that makes sense because if we're going to have durable consumer and we rely on the client to do it, then if the client never come back or destroy or loses the information, then even if you try to recover that code or restart that client, you'll have to start processing messages again. By having NATS maintain consumer information or a view into that stream where exactly the client is in the, the consumer is in the stream, well, then you can have multiple consumers and they don't have to maintain this information. So enough talking, let's jump in. So we're going to start by creating some um, simple Go code. By the way, um, everything I'm showing here and more can be found in the NAS documentation. So to find the code examples or to see how to use NAS from your favorite programming language, go navigate to NAS.io, go to documentation, then scroll down to developing with NAS. Then if you're interested in Jetstream, we've seen how to connect to NAS and send message and receive, but specifically we're talking about Jetstream. And notice that in terms of the libraries, you have um, Go, of course, Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, C, Rust, Elixir, Zig. So whatever your thing is, um, essentially you can um, you have a library. And if you don't have a library, it's fairly easy how to connect using the RESTful endpoint. But we're not going to cover that. And so again, um, just go down to Jetstream here. And then it gives you a deep dive into how to um, essentially review some of the information that we already cover. Of course, not all of it be covered, so definitely read that. And then um, it goes into how to manage in streams and customers. And you can see example in you know Java and so on, right? And some of those support the languages. And definitely, if you go to the documentation for those pages, um, lang um, libraries, you will see um, the documentation there. So the first thing we can do, of course, is start off with our um, Go application. And what I'm going to do is prepare our app in case we want to use um, security. Now, the configuration file I showed and I'm currently running doesn't have security, but I'll just start off by preparing our example with that. And so I have variables here for username and password, hostname and port. I'm going to use the init function. If you don't know Go or you don't know this init function, basically Go has this ability that if you have an init function defined with this name, it runs first before main. So you can have multiple init functions and they all run before main. No, be careful with them because if you have multiple, the order is not defined. So anyway, the next thing I'm going to do is write a function to exit, you know, to log fatal if there's an error. No, having this function means that oh, we just have one line when we want to do a check for fatal instead of three lines. So let's just simplify the code a little bit. Now, inside of our main, what we're going to do is configure our URL. And it's very simple. I'm just going to assume that oh, we don't have any security, and that's the default URL. And then if the username is set, then I should use that. And then I'm going to try and create a secure 
URL. So that's very straightforward forward. And notice the connection is the same, right? We just do not that connect that URL and the check there, I use my fatal on error function. And notice how that makes things very simple. And then I defer closing out that. Now let's focus on the main part because that's where most of the action is going to happen. And that's where most of the things we need to change is going to occur. So I'm going to write an application that by default only run for 10 seconds and then it shuts down. Um, sure, I can kill it whenever I want before the 10 seconds, but just in case I don't exit, I like it to just exit after 10 seconds. I mean, that's just all I want. Though I don't have any specific reason other than that's what I'm doing, okay? So <laughs> I'm putting that in. And so now, when it comes to connecting to Jetstream, we create a Jetstream connection, and that's very easy. Off of our last connection, we just simply say we want a Jetstream connection. Now, there are options that we can pass the Jetstream, but we don't need to pass any so this is the simplest way i encourage you to read the documentation for the library that you're using then we want to subscribe remember we already have a publisher that the publishers don't need to know anything about jetstream now you can publish through jetstream and the documentation recommend that you publish through jetstream if you're using jetstream but other than that if the publishers just publish as default and we're going to use the command line tool as our publisher, and we're not going to change anything there. So when we subscribe for messages, we just want to say we want to subscribe to this very specific subject. Now we could say just subscribe to this stream and don't specify the subject and then we'll get all the messages. But we want messages just for this um, subject in this stream. And notice all we'll be saying. We're saying jet stream subscribe to this subject and we want to bind to this stream stream orders and then we're going to put, use a function to do our processing essentially so this is one an ephemeral consumer because we don't use any um name for a consumer so that every time we connect to that it will see the consumer that we're using and two this is a push consumer where that's going to push the messages to us as fast as we can work on them so it's going to send us a message we get to work on it and then it's going to send us another message and so if we look at our process message function, it's pretty simple. We just print out that we got this message and the data for that message, and that's it. And notice that it doesn't do anything. It doesn't add a, don't have to automatically acknowledge your messages or anything like that. Just simply returning from this handle function, you know, our handler here, the process message function, not know that all we've acknowledged the message and therefore it can send it the next one. So that's our entire application. So let's go run it and see how it works. We're going to start by taking a look at our NAS server configuration file. You can see all we have is Jetstream, and this is as, for, as before last week, and we're going to start our NAS server. Then we have um, a watch showing the number of streams that's created, or rather the stream stats um, listing out our stream. We'll go ahead and just create a stream right off the bat because we know how to do this already. I'm going to use the minus subject um argument so i can specify the subject and just keep pressing enter for the default as i mentioned before when we did one with the line line in the previous video accept all the defaults you don't need to change anything and that's it our stream is created and now we can go ahead and start with our publisher which i'll use the command line tool to publish i can also publish from source code from go i can also publish from go but we know how to do that already i'll just use the convenience of um, publishing from the command line and I'll publish a message every two seconds to orders that US and now we know that our whole stream should be saving that so if we go over to our code now and we run it so if we run um, the code that we created you see that uh, we are picking up from the very first message because this is a ephemeral consumer example so if I clear it and run again, you'll see I pick it from the very first message again and notice the name for my consumer. It's a random name because it's a ephemeral consumer. If I run multiple copies of the same code, you can see that I have two consumer. Okay, so that's how easy it is to create an ephemeral consumer. Now we'll go back and modify our code to write a durable consumer. And um, we're just going to focus on the parts that's really going to change a lot. So let's say for now that we just really want to focus on, so it's between these two lines. After we make 
connection to Jetstream, and before we go to sleep for 10 seconds. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to get rid of that subscribe line. And what we want to do is just create a consumer first. So we're going to say Jetstream add consumer to the order stream, because if we're going to add a consumer, we should say to which stream we're going to add it. There's a way that all Nats can figure out based on the subject we use, but it's best to just be explicit. And then we're going to say that if this fails, then of course exit. Now that's come, that function has come in very handy. And then for consumer configuration, we're going to say durable field of this struct. We want it to have the name my consumer one. That's the name we want to give to our um, durable consumer. Notice this durable is not a flag, it's a string for the name of what that durable consumer is. Now you can also give your consumer a description, and that shows up in the list when you list your consumers. Um, you can say what they're about or something if you want to add a description. All this is optional. The only thing for us to create a durable consumer is really to just have that durable field. And then, of course, you can say how you want um, message to be replayed, um, whether it's instant, which is the default, or at the rate in which it was delivered. And so I'm just showing you that you can change that here. But again, this is the default here to be instant. OK, now after this, now we can do a pull subscribe. We're going to create a subscription saying that, oh, hey, we want to subscribe to this very specific subject. Again, we could choose not to subscribe to a very specific subject. And we want to be or have a view into the stream that's managed by this consumer. Remember, we created the consumer above. Now, if you run this code multiple times, um, it doesn't matter that uh, we try to add a consumer because NADS doesn't do anything if the configuration that you want for the consumer is exactly what it is, right? It's either potent. So don't worry about this code or if you run multiple example instances of this code, it's going to try and recreate the consumer. No, that's not going to happen. And now, of course, we're going to check for error. And then once we have a subscription, we can say so long as our subscription is valid. Remember, we're pulling messages from this um, from that via this consumer. Let's fetch um, some message. And we're telling that how many messages to give us. We can say we want batches of 10, 20, whatever. And Nats can give us that amount if it's available, right? So, of course, if there's an error, we shouldn't try to process it. So if there's no error, then um, we're going to process that message. Essentially, if the error is equal to nil, we try and process the message. And because we're fetching um, batches of messages, we set our batch to one, so we know that we can always just um, process the first message or the zeroth one. And that's it. Now, if we're in this for loop, so when exactly is our subscription going to become invalid and exit this for loop? Well, don't know, right? The server might have to go down or something like that. But we want our application to be able to process messages in a for loop and then, you know, exit after 10 minutes. So what we should do is move the check in this for loop into the process message. And we can do that by, so once we have the for loop inside of our process message, Notice we need the subscription and not a message because the subscription is being used inside of this process message function to check and see if we have a valid subscription and then use the subscription to fetch a message. This allows us to spin off a go routine and then proceed now to wait the 10 seconds. Now, after we wait around for 10 seconds, one of the, one of the things we can do is we can say, let's use the subscription to unsubscribe. Um, finally, even when we say here, sub that unsubscribe, notice we're not given any time for our um, go routine to exit. Essentially, we say sub that unsubscribe and we proceed to shut down the application. Um, you know how you can wait on your go routine to do proper cleanup? You could create a channel in which you wait after you say sub that unsubscribe, and you can wait for the go routine to send you a message telling you that it's exit successfully. Or you could use a wait group to wait on the go routine shutting down. So you know how to do this. So I'm not going to show that here. All right. So let's go run our updated application now with this durable consumer. So let's um, run our new consumer example with a durable consumer. In the meantime, while we're updating our code, quite a number of messages were added. But you can see there, our durable consumer name is my consumer one, and we can go back all the way to the beginning of message. Now, this doesn't scroll back all the way to message one, but I can guarantee you that we do get message one. 
and now when we shut down our application after 10 seconds and then we run again notice all we pick up from message 1284 because the last one we received was 1283. Again, I killed the application or interrupted before the 10 seconds and we, our last message was 1287. And notice once I started back up, we got from 1288. So this goes to show that NAT is remembering just where this consumer is in that stream. And so when clients connect and subscribe to that consumer, of course, they can then start exactly from where the consumer is because the consumer is durable. NAT's remembering it. Unlike an ephemeral consumer, which NATS wouldn't remember, just create for the time that the client is connected. And then that's our previous example. And then you saw those random name that it gives those consumers. And so we can now um, clean up our application or environment here. Uh, of course, we're going to remove the consumer. And then we're going to delete the stream that we created, um, orders. Then we can shut down. Um, our publisher because we don't really need to be publishing right now and then we can go and shut down our NATS server if we don't need it and I certainly don't so I'm gonna sh shut down everything that's it I, I hope you learned something um, the takeaway here is that using Jetstream is very easy even from within Go if you made it this far of the video and you're not a subscriber Please consider subscribing, uh, especially if you like the content and you want to be notified when I post new videos. Uh, of course, you can click the notification bell. As for my return of subscribers, thank you so much for coming back and sticking with me. Um, see you in the next video. Stay safe. Bye.